In this lesson, we are going to review the MIDI interface, the digital analog converters I2S format, and all their signals we'd expect to see at their connections. The MIDI interface is very simple. When connected to our 6N137 optocoupler IC, pins 4 and 5 are used to light up a tiny LED inside the IC chip. Pin 4 is always 5 volts as long as our MIDI keyboard and our USB interface is on. But pin 5 will source the ground and it will stay open until we want the LED to light up by connecting pin 5 to ground. This switching is done by our MIDI keyboard or MIDI USB interface. MIDI jack pin 4 has a 220 ohm resistor. Used as a current limiter, its purpose is to protect the circuits from pulling too much current this resistor is placed between the MIDI pin jack 4 and the IC chips pin 2, which would be the anode of our little LED. The 1N4148 diode is used to protect the circuit from reverse polarity. It is placed across pins 2 and 3 of our IC chip. MIDI jack pin 5 connects to IC chip pin 3. Please note that the MIDI jack shown in the schematic is indicating the front face of a MIDI jack. We need to turn the jack around to the back in order to connect our wires up. So please pay close attention to which MIDI jack pins are which, depending on which side you are looking at. When the tiny LED inside the IC chip comes on, it will turn on the receiver. This means if we turn the LED on, the output on the IC's pin 6 will switch to ground, which is low. If the LED is off, we'll see 3.3 volts on pin 6 because we have a 10K resistor connected between pin 6 and the 3.3 volt power supply. The 10K resistor is a pull-up resistor and as long as pin 6 is not connected straight to ground, it will provide 3.3 volts to the UART receive port, which is pin A3 on the microcontroller. If you were to monitor the MIDI signal, you would see 3.3 volts on the UART receive port constantly while it was idle. When data is sent, the line will first go low and then data sent. You would see it switch between 3.3 volts and ground. When data transfer is complete, the line will return to a steady 3.3 volts. The switching on and off is the bits of data and they are clocked at 31,250 hertz. Notice we do not need a separate clock signal with the UART port. We have predefined the port to expect the signal to be 31,250 hertz as you will see later on in the code. And that's it. Very simple but powerful way to control our synthesizer. Now let's take a look at what happens between the microcontroller and the digital analog converter module. We stream data to the digital analog converter using the I to S format. There are several different modes of I2S. The one we will be using is the standard Philips I2S format, which will be 16-bit left-aligned data. This I2S format uses three signals, bit clock, word clock, and data. The bit clock is our clock reference. The digital analog converter can sync up the data bits the microcontroller is sending by referring to this clock signal. This signal will run approximately 1 MHz. On the digital analog converter, this signal will be on the BCK pin. On the microcontroller, this will be pin A5. The word clock is a much slower clock signal at 32 kHz and is used to let the digital analog converter know the data we are sending is for the left channel or the right. When the signal is high, the data is for the right. When it is low, it is for the left. This signal will be found on the LCK pin of our digital analog converter and pin A4 of our microcontroller. Our serial data is our last signal. The data signal is the high speed stream of binary zeros and ones to transfer the 16-bit values from the microcontroller to the digital analog converter. The data signal will be high speed like the bit clock signal at 1 MHz. 
but it will constantly vary due to the data. On our digital analog converter, this will be pin DIN. On our microcontroller, this is pin A7. Understanding how the I2S format works is crucial for coding later on, as we will see in a future lesson.